Welcome back to ECE 442-542. This is lecture 5.3b, which we are in this lecture going to introduce this idea or this concept of the Ragazzini Direct Controller Design. And we'll first look at notation and terminology. Then we'll look at the four restrictions. And those restrictions restrictions are really designed to allow us to create a controller that's not being asked to do the impossible. And then we'll just look at the controller design process, which is really a two-step process. But the first step is where the restrictions are addressed, and that one, the first step, is really the majority of where the action is in this design process. Here's some notation. We have our Unity Output Feedback configuration. Unity Output Feedback, that means that we are taking the output Y and measuring that and comparing that with a reference input R. The comparison is then our air signal E, and then we push the air signal through our controller. The controller's output is U. If we have a disturbance at that location in our system, that may influence what Y looks like or what the plant is doing in response to that disturbance. And maybe our controller will allow us to improve the behavior of our closed loop transfer function between the reference input R and the output Y, even in the face of a disturbance. Here's some of the terminology. We're going to be using N for numerator and D for denominator. And then we'll try to subscript those N's and D's to be consistent with the letter being used for the plant and the controller. Our plant we will be calling capital G of Z. The controller, what we're trying to do to improve things in terms of behavior in the closed loop we will call capital C of Z. The plant's transfer function then will be rational and it will be a ratio of two polynomials. <clears throat> the numerator polynomial N sub G of Z and the denominator polynomial we will denote as D sub G of Z. That's the transfer function of the plant. Then you can anticipate that the notation used for the controller will be consistent. It's N over D, but now the subscripts are changed to a C, consistent with how we have labeled the controller's transfer function as capital C of Z. And sometimes I might get a little bit less notational and just leave off the bracket Z when I'm talking about that and you should just know that these are now polynomials in the complex variable Z. The next notational transfer function that we will use and define for this system is actually the desired closed loop transfer function. We're calling that capital T sub C and so that's going to be the subscript used on the numerator and denominator polynomials. The closed loop transfer function, hopefully you can do the block diagram algebra. Hopefully you can actually see that or you could even derive that fairly quickly. You could see from this block diagram that E, the signal coming out of the summing junction, is R minus and now what is making up that signal being compared with R? If we keep going back, we see that it's actually GCE. Again, I'm not keeping track of the arguments, but now you can hopefully combine the terms that involve E. And now you see that E is equal to 1 over 1 plus GCR. But Y is just GCE. So that all of those taken together, 
or combining, replacing E with what it is in terms of R, now we have our closed loop transfer function between the reference input R and the output Y. We're setting the disturbance equal to zero to find this transfer function between the reference input R and the output Y, and that's now GC over 1 plus GC. Now, if we replace G and C notationally with the rational expression each of those are equal to, or how we've defined them, we now have NG over DG times NC over DC. That's our loop gain, and that's in the numerator over the denominator, which is 1 plus NG over DG times NC over DC. We can now obtain a common denominator for the numerator and denominator. Here we have a ratio of ratios, so to speak. We can cancel that common denominator, which is d sub g, d sub c, and now we can write the ratio of polynomials making up the closed loop or desired closed loop transfer function is now n sub g, n sub c over d sub g, d sub c plus n sub g, n sub c. And it might be that at some point we might want to just call that, and we've already determined or established this notation, that product of n sub g and n sub c, that's now the numerator of our controller times the numerator of our plant, that product of polynomials is now the numerator of our desired transfer function. The denominator of our desired transfer function, which we've agreed to denote that as d sub t sub c, is now d sub g d sub c plus n sub g n sub c. And what we're really doing, in a sense, is in this Ragazzini approach, we will say, you know what, we want this for our desired closed loop transfer function. This is what our plant is, g of z. What does that mean c of z needs to be? So we're really, in effect, trying to find n sub c and d sub c once we know or create n sub t sub c over d sub t sub c and the plant g of z. Well, in order for the controller to actually be realizable or to make a non-impossible result, that actually means that there's going to be restrictions on how we build this desired transfer function and how we create the controller transfer function capital C of Z. So that now leads to these four restrictions and we'll go through more of that in terms of the explanation of where these arise from later but now let's just state these restrictions. <clears throat> Excuse me, the first restriction, restriction which I'll call capital R1, is the controller C of Z, which is N sub C over D sub C, must be causal. And initially, we don't know what N sub C and D sub C is. We just know that it needs to be causal. What's it mean for a transfer function to be causal? Well, that means the degree of the denominator polynomial needs to be at least as large as the degree of the numerator polynomial. Or, another way of saying that, is capital C of Z, our controller, is at least proper. That means that we have to have the denominator polynomial at least the same order as the numerator. The numerator polynomial cannot be of higher order than the denominator polynomial, or that would basically be telling us that we have a non-causal, we can basically say what's going to happen in the future, a non-causal controller, and that's not physically realizable. 
Another way of stating that, which means the same thing, is that our desired closed loop transfer function, capital T sub C of Z, must have at least the same pole zero excess as G of Z. Remember, the pole zero excess is just how many poles does G of Z have? Suppose that the degree of the denominator of our plant, which we were calling D sub G, let's say that that was 4. And let's say that the degree of the numerator of our plant was 2. Then what's the pole 0 excess? That's just 4 minus 2, so that's 2. That means that our desired closed loop transfer function has to have that same pole zero excess. Meaning if T sub C of Z has a denominator that is of power 6 or the degree of the denominator of our desired closed loop transfer function is 6 then the degree of the numerator of our desired closed loop transfer function cannot be any larger than 4 because we need a pole zero excess of 2 in T sub C of Z. That's restriction number one. The next two restrictions actually work together to guarantee internal stability of the closed loop system. So we need all of these different transfer functions and this goes way back to maybe if the first homework assignment or the second you calculated many different transfer functions between the reference input and the output, the disturbance in the output, the noise in the output. All of those transfer functions have to be stable. That then guarantees internal stability. In order to guarantee internal stability of the closed loop system, another way to achieve that is to make sure that this controller that we design or that we create out of some design process, that controller, capital C of Z, cannot cancel any unstable poles or any unstable zeros in the plant itself, in capital G of Z. So if G of Z had a pole outside the unit circle, capital C of Z, the controller, cannot cancel that or if the plant had a zero outside the unit circle, we can't have our controller canceling that either. So those or that restriction or this guarantee of making sure that the internal stability is stable of our closed loop system leads to two restrictions. Restriction two says that the desired closed loop transfer function T sub C of Z must contain the unstable zero factors that exist in G of Z. And this will become a little bit more obvious when we work through the example. But if we had a zero in our plant at 4, Z equal to 4, way out there, then T sub C of Z must have that same factor of z minus 4 in its numerator. And that will ensure that the controller that we build from this design process will not try to cancel that 0 outside the unit circle. The third restriction, again restrictions 2 and 3, are to ensure that the controller that we end up building doesn't have any unstable pole zero cancellations from our plant. The third restriction now says that this transfer function 1 minus T sub C of Z, T sub C of Z is a rational, that's our desired closed loop transfer function, we subtract that from 1, that factor must contain unstable zero factors for all unstable pole factors in G of Z. If we now had an unstable pole in our plant G of Z at 2, then we would want to make sure that when we looked at 1 minus T sub C of Z, 
that its numerator actually had a factor of z minus 2 in its numerator. So that 1 minus t sub c of z must contain unstable zero factors for all the unstable pole factors in g of z. And if we had three unstable poles in g of z, then we would need to make sure that we had those three factors corresponding to those unstable poles resulting from 1 minus t sub c of z. Or we would need to build our desired closed loop transfer function t sub c of z such that 1 minus t sub c of z had numerator factors that equaled those unstable pole factors in g of z. One more restriction. Restriction 4. Restriction 4 is dealing with steady state behavior or steady state accuracy of the closed loop system. And I'll give you a couple of examples. So we want to build or select or design, create a desired closed loop transfer function, t sub c of z, to achieve acceptable, and whatever that means is going to depend on the particular situation that we are confronted with or working with, we want acceptable steady state errors to occur. One might be, oh, we want our desired closed loop transfer function, t sub c of z, to have a DC gain of 1. That means if I applied to this closed loop system an input of 6.2, then if I have a DC gain of 1, if my closed loop system is stable, after all the transients have gone away, then I will be assured that my output will track that reference input of 6.2 or my reference output, I'm sorry, my output due to a reference input of 6.2, my output will equal 6.2 if I have a DC gain of 1. If we're now applying ramp inputs, then we might be interested in a velocity error specification. And that's a little bit more involved. Now we take minus t, which is the sample period, times the derivative of our desired closed loop transfer function with respect to z. We set that equal to what we want our velocity error to be due to a unit ramp input. And we also will ensure that t sub c of z has a dc gain of 1. So we'll first make sure the closed loop transfer function has a dc gain of 1. Then we will do this equation. We'll solve that for the un declared or yet to be determined parameters in t sub c of z such that we get the error that we want. And the error due to a unit ramp is 1 over k sub v. Meaning if we wanted an error between our ramp input and the output of 1 half in the steady state, we would want a k sub v, a capital K sub v, of 2. If capital K sub V is 2, that right-hand side is now determined, and we would use that to compute what the yet-to-be-determined parameters are in capital T sub C of Z. Okay, I've just stated the four restrictions, and your head's just swimming with what is he talking about. Let's do one more stirring the pot. Let's provide you with the steps for this Ragazzini di direct controller design process and then we'll go through an example. Here are the steps. The first step is basically make sure you meet all these restrictions. So you select or create or build whatever however you want to phrase it. You do create some desired closed loop transfer function capital T sub C of Z capital T sub C of Z, that desired closed loop transfer function, has to satisfy those four restrictions. R1, R2, R3, and R4. R1 makes your controller causal. R2 and R3 make sure that your 
controller's transfer function is not canceling unstable poles and zeros in the original plant and R4 is dealing with steady state accuracy. Once you've built this T sub C of Z, then it's really just turning the crank to find your controller capital C of Z. And that's through what I'm calling this controller design formula. The controller design formula now says that we take one over the original plant. So what's that doing? This is really sort of saying I'm going to invert the plant. I'm going to get rid of the plant and I'm going to replace it. That's what my controller is doing. I'm first getting rid of the original plant and then I'm replacing the plant with something that will once I've closed the loop, produce a closed loop transfer function equal to T sub C of Z between the reference input R and the output Y. And that happens as a result of applying this formula to produce the, transfer, the controller's transfer function capital C of Z. So you just take one over the plant and you multiply that by this ratio of ratios, the desired closed loop transfer function over 1 minus the closed loop transfer function. You clean all of that up and you will get your resulting controller that achieves the desired closed loop transfer function, which we're calling T sub C of Z, that satisfies all of these restrictions R1, R2, R3, and R4. That's the Ragazzini Direct Controller Design introduction. We'll now look at an example.